Hi, it's me Jazzy. I'm back with part two of my review and build of the Geek Pi Raspberry Pi kits. In my last video, we had a look at what you get in the box and we went over some of the operating systems and how to install them. In this video, I'm going to be assembling the two Raspberry Pi kits and making up a bootable SD card so we can install Raspberry Pi OS on our two little Raspberry Pis. Let's dive into it, shall we? We've got our case here, so I'm going to take the top part off the case. You can see there's the four holes there for your motherboard mounts and it's quite clear which way around it's going to go because you can tell by the holes in the actual motherboard. So as you can see I do have my anti-static strap which should stop me passing any uh, unwanted static electricity through to the electronic components here. So this is quite simple, straightforward. That just sits there on the, the moulded in little standoffs there and you do get the little screws included. So this is where my fix-it kit is gonna come in handy. It does magnet to the screw, look at that. That's amazing. So let's pop these in. Not too tight, just tight enough. You don't want to put too much stress on your motherboard. This is only the half of it, we've got two of these to build. Okay, there we go, so the motherboard is in quite nicely there, which means I believe I can click the top part of the case back on. Uh, let's click that in. That's it, nice little click there. Ah, oh, that looks very smart, doesn't it? There we go. Nice little job on that. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to put the heat sinks on. Now it does give you in the instruction book, there are some images down here of where your heat sinks need to go. Any components basically that need the heat taken away from them. So let's get these on. They have self-adhesive tape on the back of the heat sinks. Okay, so I'm looking at the diagram here which is showing me the order that the heat sinks need to go on. So let's get the processor one on first, that's the largest one. So nice little aluminium heat sinks. It's quite nice that they've included these in the pack because you've got these heat sinks and you've got an actual cooling fan as well. So this is gonna do a great job of keeping this arm chip nice and cool. We're not gonna be pushing this chip at all, okay. Lovely. Now they have to be perfectly parallel. Not for performance reasons, just for my OCD. Okay, so we're nearly there. We're halfway there with the heat sinks. I feel like Bon Jovi. We're halfway there. Okay, uh, using the tweezers here that came with the Fix It kit from one of my previous videos. See, this stuff does actually come in handy. Good old Timu to the rescue again. Use my handy tweezers to get this in. Very nice. Okay, there we go. So that's the heat sinks installed. The next job is the fan. Okay, so our fan comes in this nice little plastic bag here, which is quite nice. Very, very tiny little screwdriver here. Wow, this is like a pixie screwdriver. And we've got our fan. The low noise fan, apparently. So it tells me on the blurb. Wow. What a tiny little cute fan. Right, let's get this in. Now, they've provided again some standoffs on the inside of the lid this time. So we're gonna need it this way up if we wanna be pushing air out. So let's get this in. I can see which way the top goes on. Uh, we need the wires this side because they're going to connect onto the GPIO. Let's get the fan screws in. I like the fact that they've provided me with five of each screw when you only need four. Now that must be because they realise how good I am at losing screws. 
you can bet your bottom dollar it's the packs that only come with four screws they're the ones that I'm going to lose one of on the floor no matter how many screws you drop you always come back with one less than you had I could drop 20 screws on the floor and come back with only 19, believe me. Not that I have a habit of dropping 20 screws on the floor, you understand. Even though the case is plastic, I will say it does all look very neat once it's assembled. It all goes together very well, so I, I give them bonus points actually for how easily this kit goes together. Had no problem screwing in the motherboard. That was nice and easy. The heat sinks went on nice and easy. Fans gone together nice and easy. Let's not jinx it. It's going well so far. Now, if you're not sure where exactly on your GPIO you are going to plug your fan headers into, it does give you a nice little diagram here, which is very handy. They've made it very easy with this kit. Okay, so referring to our diagram here, we can see, looking at this, that the second pin in is the 5 volt supply. The next one is the ground. Okay, and fan control. Right, lovely. So, second one in. Then the ground pin next. Fan control. Okay, that's my fan connections in. So this means, I think, I'm at the point now where I can actually close it up. So that's all complete now. I've got the feet on. Now all I need to do is to build the other one. And there they are. Our little Raspberry Pi is fully assembled and ready to go. Next thing we need to do is to make a bootable SD card to install our operating systems. So as handy as it is that they've included this little micro SD card reader in the package. I'm not too sure about the logistics of this little device having the micro SD card going right into the USB port. I'm sure it's fine but I do have some visions of losing my micro SD card somewhere in the depths of the USB port. So I'm going with my tried and trusted Transcend SD card reader. These are a good bit of kit. I'll leave the link in the video description in case you do want to get yourself one of these. They do come in handy. Just literally pop your micro SD card into the side of the card reader and that's good to go. So let's pop this in the PC and we will make a bootable micro SD card for Raspberry Pi OS. So in order to get Raspberry Pi OS installed on our little Raspberry Pis, we'll need to use some sort of imager. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to use the Raspberry Pi imager, which is readily available on the Raspberry Pi OS site. So as you can see, there's an easy download for Windows button. I'm using Windows 11, so I'll need this. If you're using Mac OS, we've got an option for that, or for Ubuntu if you're a Linux user already. So, all you have to do is hit the download button, click install, installs really quickly, that's done. So then you've just run the imager, and there we have it. So this is what the start screen looks like on the Raspberry Pi imager. It's all very simple. So you choose your device, ours is the Raspberry Pi 4. You can see there it's got the Model B. Choosing the OS, we want Raspberry Pi OS because we're using a Pi 4 we want the 64-bit version of the operating system. So we literally just click there to select this operating system and it will create a bootable image on our SD card. So we can now remove the USB. Always remove USB safely. Safety is important, of course. So you just take your micro SD card. This is now a bootable operating system. All we have to do is slot our little micro SD card into the back of our Raspberry Pi got a little port on the back there it goes in connection side up and it just slots in nice and easy there push that in so let's connect up a keyboard and monitor as an added bonus I will be using a Raspberry Pi keyboard because I just happen to have one but don't worry you don't need one of those literally any keyboard will do okay let's get this little Raspberry Pi hooked up shall we I've got my little keyboard here oh, USB syndrome does it ever go in right way first time? I will need a mouse. Just happen to have one here. What else are we going to need? Ah, HDMI cable. Let's pop that in. 
So I'm going to be using my big monitor here, as this one I've just discovered doesn't have HDMI. So plug that into the mini HDMI on the side. Ah, monitor has detected a new external input. Do you wish to use this? Yes, I do. And the last thing is the power cable I've got here, the power supply that was included with the kit. And we do have some lights on our Raspberry Pi. This is good. It's working. Oh, here we go. Something's happening. So the options that we have on here, we need to set the country. So let's set that first of all, United Kingdom. Language is British English and time zone is London. Use English keyboard layout and next. It's pretty simple. It's not that dissimilar to setting up Windows or Ubuntu or any other OS. Now it's asking to connect to the Wi-Fi. Choose a browser. Uh, you've got a choice of Chromium or Firefox. Just click next and on we go to the next thing. It's now asking to update the pre-installed software. Okay, through the magic of editing, our updates are complete and our Raspberry Pi is rebooting. That's it, we've got our Raspberry Pi start menu there. So you've got programming, you've got your web browsers, VLC media player is pre-installed. You've got accessories, so like calculator, you've got a file manager, um, you've got an SD card copier, task manager, terminal, all the normal things you'd expect from Raspberry Pi. It's telling me there that Bluetooth is active, Wi-Fi is active, there's your volume control there, and your clock up in the corner there. So we can go in and we can start up Chromium browser. And there we go, there's Chromium, taking us of course to the Raspberry Pi site where you can learn actually even more about your Raspberry Pi. So there we go, that's the first Pi all set up. I now have to do the same again for the second one. Once you get into using your Raspberry Pi, you'll soon realize there's loads you can actually do with it. It's great for learning programming. There are lots of books like this one on the subject. It's ideal if you want to get into that. It's ideal because it has a great GPIO that you can use for plugging in all sorts of gadgets, little projects, electronics projects, robotics. It's a really good learning tool. Once you get into it, you'll realize there's actually quite a lot you can do with your Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna be using it in a timing system. We'll find out a bit more about that in a future episode. Thanks for joining me for this Raspberry Pi build. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. I will be most grateful for that. Join me again next time. I've got some more interesting tech projects coming up and unboxing videos. So I will see you again on the next one. Take care. See you soon.